Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Three Italian wines in front of me today. Uh, I've, they've been hanging around for maybe a bit too long. Uh, I was waiting for some more uh, suitable partners to turn up, in, uh, turn up to taste them with, and uh, they didn't. So uh, I thought, oh, stuff it. Let's just get into them. Uh, so second and third are from Tuscany. But the first one is Piemonte, and it's uh, Spa's own label Barolo. It says Valle Vento uh, Barolo 2007. Let us give it a whirl. Well, this is the uh, traditional style of Barolo. A um, bit of volatility, so there's a touch of vinegar in there lurking in the background. This meatiness, um, uh, I mean, a, a, a technically adept winemaker would, would rip a wine like this apart. But it's actually got this rustic charm. Um, may, oh, should you say that rustic charm? It's got um, uh, full of faults, uh, but m not uh, so many of them that uh, you can, it makes, renders it undrinkable. Some people will hate it, some people will love it. Those who love it will look at it and say, but it's got this nice, almost fragrant, um, almost citrus peel-like character. A bit of plum in there, a bit of tar, uh, maybe even a bit of roses in there. Uh, it smells interesting, certainly. Very rustic. Um, and um, chewy, it's still got tannins there. Uh, dis uh, you know, I don't, don't know if you saw the colour, it's quite pale in colour. Um, uh, but then it's got this quite, it's got quite a lot of charm about it. Um, I like it's, it, it's light, uh, yes, it's, it's the weird flavours, almost a bit of banana, a bit of custard apple. Um, the, if there is some red fruit flavour there, it's not on the plum side rather than the red berries and certainly not no black currants there, which some modern Barolos can can have. Um, and then there's this slightly sweet thing, like almost like honey uh, coming through. Um, I a wine that if I were to have it sit there and try and sip by itself, I would struggle. But with a uh, a wild boar stew, I I can I I'd be surprised, probably surprised myself how much I'd get through. Let's see whether we say the same about the next one. So we're in Tuscany now, and this is a Vignetti Trebio uh, 2009, uh, and uh, it's an IGT Toscana, so it doesn't conform to any of the uh, uh, DOC or DOCG regulations. Uh, I think the blend here is like 60% uh, Sangiovese, I, quite a lot of Syrah in there, like 30% Syrah, and then uh, Merlot, Cabernet, and Petit Verdot, I think, making up the other 10%. Give it a whirl. Well, I don't know whether it's a legacy of the Barolo, but this has almost got uh, some of that same... Uh, I was talking about sweetness there, that bit of honey. This, it's, this has got what I call the brown sugar uh, character, so dry brown sugar, if that makes sense. So the flavour of brown sugar without the sweetness. Um, uh, it's got plums. It's got it's got a bit of that tar in there. I'd, I'd, I'd have, if I'd tasted this blind, I'd probably have plonked it up in Tuscany. Uh, sorry, in, in Piemonte. Um, and um, uh, again, the fruit feels rounded and warm. I, I look at the colour of it as well, and it's not as deep in colour as uh, uh, as some uh, quite a lot of Tuscan wines are. And also for 2009, it's it looks quite developed. Uh, so there's a softness and smoothness. It doesn't feel like it's going to be hugely complex, but it feels like it's going to be uh, quite satisfying. Well, I've just had a look at the back and it says um, uh, fermentation partly in amphoras. It should be amphorae, I know, but that's pedantic. Um, and I don't know whether it's that or whether it's the blend of the grapes, but there is this warmth and there's this rustic charm. It feels like um, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't remind me all that much of Tuscany. It almost reminds me of a warm Barolo um, in terms of um, its uh, softness, plushness, that type of fruit where it's not, uh, I think of, of, of Chianti and, uh, and Brunello uh, as, as being on, more on the cherry note. Here it's more in the slightly rustic plumminess and maybe a bit of the dark, darker berries uh, and red berries too. Um, it doesn't feel like someone's gone over the top in terms of extraction. Uh, so while it is quite, does feel quite warm and round, there's still this freshness coming through on the finish. I I, I like it. No idea whether it's available in the UK, uh, but uh, anyway, final one: um, Brunello di Montalcino, uh, Pinino, two thousand and seven. Let's see whether this lives up to uh, uh, the Brunello billing. 
Well, I don't know whether it's the day, but <laughs> this feels soft, warm and plummy as well. Um, I was talking before about cherries and uh, I, was, I was expecting to pick up a, a note of cherries here. But um, I don't know, I get this warm, round, softy, juicy plumminess. Um, and uh, yes, there's some berries in there, um, but uh, again, it's on that uh, more, maybe not strawberry, but certainly on that Loganberry edge where uh, there is a bit of red in the skin, in the flesh of those uh, uh, of those berries. Um, it, um, some Brunello can be a bit stir and a bit stern but here it feels open it feels rounded and um, smells like it's going to be very tasty honest and uh, yeah rugged wine and then when you come to taste it that's when the brunalinity just invented that word kicks in so um, I mean, I'm, in, in terms of alcohol, it's not uh, huge, 14% is big enough, but um, uh, compared with the one before, which was 14%, uh, here it just feels like there's a, a um, probably the same amount of, fr of flesh, but the structure is just much more stern and commanding. Um, so you get this, you get this warm generosity, uh, but you get this sternness. And um, uh, whereas the one before is a bit capricious, this one has just got aristocracy written all over it. Um, there's a bit of herbs coming through. Again, this touch of the what I call the ripe, the, the um, dry brown sugar. Uh, but um, one of those wines which. Um, it's really strange, Nebbiolo uh, compared with Sangiovese, Sangiovese the, entirely, uh, the grape of uh, Brunel di Montalcino. Um, uh, so they, they, they can be quite different, but sometimes when they get to, when they start talking, the, the soil starts coming through. There is this very similar character. So um, uh, both of these had what I call a touch of iron, a bit of a ferrous edge. Um, so here... Uh, it's there in among so many other things in, in the uh, in, in the Barolo it was yeah again in among lots and lots of flavors but this is much more grown-up wine though it's weird saying that Barolo can be great that one wasn't great but here uh, it feels like a wine that uh, I want to come back and pay homage to I'm just going to pay homage to it again it's a bit tasty that um, and uh, yes I mean the what I like about it is um, it's 2007 so it's uh, nearly five years old now we're in we're in June and uh, but uh, this it's still it's still got this vigor about it um, nothing there that makes me think uh, I shouldn't be pulling the cork now um, but uh, everything there that makes me think if I wanted to keep it another five years maybe more uh, it'll still be fighting fit uh, my only problem now is uh, trying to find something equally aristocratic to uh, drink this along with tonight and uh, Ah, might have to go to the butchers, see what I can find. See you soon.